Integration testing is the process of taking different parts of your application and testing them as a group. And you might think that integration testing is really difficult to do, but in fact it is quite easy by using a Node.js library called Test Containers. This library allows us to spin up multiple Docker containers and then run our tests against them. Which in turn means that you can test almost anything with the help of this library. The only restriction you have is that the service that you want to test has to be able to run inside a Docker container. In this video we are going to be testing a simple to-dos API, which consists out of a Node.js server and a MySQL database. And if you'd like to, you can check out the source code on GitHub and you can also follow along with the tutorial by starting with the starter branch. And as an added bonus, we are also going to write a small GitHub actions function to run our integration tests on each commit to get this little green arrow here. So let's jump into the code. I've just cloned the repository from GitHub and now you can go ahead and check out the starter branch. And here you can see that we have a docker compose file in which you recognize a Node.js application and a MySQL database. These are the different parts of our application that we are going to test as a group. And you can also look into the to-dos API if you would like to. We simply can add a to-do, check a to-do or delete a to-do. And there's also a method to fetch all the non-deleted to-dos. To start the application, you first need to install the npm packages by running yarn. And afterwards, you can run yarn dev to start up the backend services with the help of Docker Compose. Once the backend has successfully started, we can send HTTP requests to our API. So for example, we can add a to-do and we can also check a to-do or we could also fetch all the to-dos. Before we can actually start writing our integration tests, we first need to install some dependencies. And hence I'm going to stop our backend services and now we need to install some node modules. Namely, we are going to install test containers, which is the library that allows us to start and stop Docker containers. We will also install Axios to make HTTP requests to our Docker containers. And we also need a test runner, which in our case will be Jasmine. Once the installation has finished, I'm going to create a file which will hold our tests. And that file will be called index.test.ts. With Jasmine, our test runner, we can create a test suite, which itself contains test specs. And to run this test, we need to execute the Jasmine binary, which is located in the node modules directory. The last argument has to be the file name, which we are going to test. As you can see, all the test specs, which in our case is just this one here, have successfully passed. But of course, this is not what we want to test for. We want to test our to-dos API with its four capabilities, namely adding to-dos, getting existing to-dos, checking to-dos and deleting to-dos. In order to make that work, we first need to make sure that we have a running application to which we can send requests to. This will be done by recreating our docker compose file with the help of test containers. Since each of our test specs requires the application to be running, we will create a before all method that will spin up our application. All we have to do to create a docker container with the help of test containers is to run a wait new generic container. And its first argument is the docker base image, which in our case will be MySQL version 8. Next to our MySQL container, we will also need a container for the Node.js API and it will run Node version 14. At this point, it's simply a matter of recreating the docker compose file inside our test file. Hence, we will start by adding the port mapping here and this can be done by using the with exposed ports method. And to add the environment variables, we are going to use the dot 
with env method. But that's not enough yet, because we also need to be able to make requests from our Node.js API to the MySQL database. And to achieve this, we first need to add a name to our container, and we also need to create a network. So in our case, we simply instantiate a new network with the name of test. Then we can add this network to our container with the help of the with network mode method. And lastly and finally, we can start our container with the start method. Same procedure with the API container. We can start by adding the volumes such that the source code is actually available inside our container. This can be done with the help of the with bind mount method. And afterwards we can add the port binding as usual. And now we also need to start the application with the with cmd command. And then we can add some environment variables. And we also need to make sure to add the container to the same network as the database. And yeah, finally we can start the container. If you know where to run this test, you would recognize that it fails with a timeout error. And that's because starting the containers takes a while, which means the default timeout of 5 seconds isn't enough. And hence we are just going to set the default timeout interval to 60 seconds. As you can see, after increasing the timeout, all of our four specs have succeeded, and the test in total took about 15 seconds. Before we will continue implementing the actual test specs for our to-do API, we are going to stop the containers as well as the network, and this will be done inside the after all method. To make that work, we also need to add some suite level variables and remove those constants here. Executing the test, we can still see that it works just fine. With all the setup work done, we can now be sure that our application is started as soon as those four test specs are executed, which in turn means that we can now make requests to our Node.js API inside those test specs. Hence, I will add some sample data up here, which we then can use in our test spec down here. We simply make two HTTP requests to our Node.js API in order to create two different to-dos. As you can see, we are still missing this API URL variable down here, but we can easily get that by querying the API container's host and mapped port. In order to ensure that those to-dos have actually been persisted to our database, we can simply fetch all the to-dos from our API and then compare the result with those to-dos that we have inserted previously. To test if we can check to-dos, we simply try to check to do one, and then again we fetch all the to-dos from our API and compare the response with the expected new state, which has the done status here. Lastly, we do exactly the same as with checking to-dos, but in this case, we expect the response not to contain to do number two because we have deleted it. Now that we have implemented the test specs, we can try to rerun the test suite. But be careful, you need to add the random false flag in order to run the test specs in descending order. As you can see, all of our four specs have passed in a matter of 16 seconds, and now we can be sure that our application is running as expected. As promised in the beginning of our video, we will now implement a GitHub action to run our integration tests on each push. And to do that, you have to go to the .github directory and create a subdirectory called workflows. And in there, we are going to create a test.yaml file. We will configure this workflow to run on each push and on each pull request. This job will run on Ubuntu and the first step is to check out our source code. Afterwards, we will install the npm dependencies and lastly, we are going to run the test with the command we have written previously. With that configuration, each commit to the master branch will automatically run your integration tests 
If it succeeds, you get that green check mark here and otherwise a red cross. And you can even inspect all of those logs here. As you have seen by now, integration testing doesn't have to be painful, because we have effectively tested the entire API with just 80 lines of code. And what's even better is that you can test any application that runs inside a Docker container with the help of this strategy, no matter how big or complex the application. And with that said, make sure to start your GitHub repository. Thanks for watching and have a great time.